All right, welcome to episode one of The Pressure Cooker. It's an Around the Horn style podcast. We are joined with five of the greatest faces in pickleball today. We have Julian Arnold, Jared Paul, Sam Query, Jason Aspis, I believe that's how he says his name, and Leah Jansen. Welcome, guys, to The Pressure Cooker. Thank you. All right, let's dive straight into the questions that we are trying to answer today. Let's start very basic. Did you guys like Mesa or Daytona better? And Jared, I'll let you start just because I have to let you talk first. Uh, we're talking about MLP, right? Absolutely. Or just as like a city. Because I can say that Daytona Beach is is not my favorite city. Um, the venue, I really liked uh, Daytona uh, as a venue. I thought the I thought it was it had a kind of a tighter feel. Um, from an energy standpoint, I would say uh, Mesa came out of the gate a little hotter, um, but towards the end, uh, Daytona seemed to pick up some some energy. So I'm I'm probably going as a whole with um, with uh, Mesa. All right, Sam, what about you? Same, but it's I mean Mesa hands down. The venue was newer; it was cleaner. The inside area where the players hung out had the turf field. Um, you know, in Daytona, we were in a tent. Also, Daytona as a city, uh, it was tired is an understatement. <laughs> I didn't, it didn't look like no building had been built there in the last like 35 years. Uh, so for me, Mesa, hands down. Jason, how, how do you feel about it? Well, so that, that facility in Daytona was actually brand new. I thought it was a very nice facility. I, I think that yeah, it was, but oh, it didn't have it? the player accommodations. I think that was one thing that was lacking that Mesa had that was great. Great for the players, a big facility to house them. Air conditioning, it was like 90 degrees in Daytona, uh, and there was nowhere to really escape the heat. Uh, the only thing I think Daytona had better was meth, really good meth in Daytona. Uh, <laughs> so that's a bonus. Jake, you should turn your mic a little bit so we can get more volume out of you. Leia, Leia, how do you feel about Daytona? I thought, like Sam, hands down, Mesa, way better. Um, I, it wasn't just like the player accommodations. I felt like the energy on court due to what I like to call the Colin Johns rules were like definitely like a downside of MLP. I felt like the higher energy players too really felt it. Um, me included, I just kind of felt like it was a different vibe, very weird, and not a fan of the Colin Johns rule changes. Can you dive a little bit more in depth and explain to the viewers what the Colin Johns rule changes were? I, yeah, I also have no idea. Well, what I, that I is. call it. Actually, I explain, idea. Explain, I idea. explain to Sam who Colin Johns is first. <laughs> He's a premier level player. <laughs> Then John's sidekick. No, I mean, uh, he I just had a lot. Of, I think uh, a lot of players came together and had a lot of complaining about, like, where they, you know, other players stepping over boundaries, allowing a certain number of people on the court. I think we could have had what, like, what they can pass instead of, like, I think owners should have been and multiple people should have still been allowed on the court. Maybe we should start establishing a bench area. Um but I also, like, for myself, I, I definitely didn't know where the line was after Pablo Tellis got called of, like, what I can and can't do. And, um, yeah, I just felt like it had, like, a little bit more of a, a, a weirder vibe because of that. Interesting. Julian, tell us your opinions on this. Um, yeah, more of the same. I think Mesa, Mesa was better. Um, obviously my team won, so that definitely makes things taste a little sweeter, but just the energy was better. Um, you know, Daytona is, as Sam put it, yes, a very tired looking town. I was calling it a burnt cigarette. Um, <laughs> that's what it feels like. Uh, so it, it, to me, it really seems like ever since, uh, MTV kind of cut ties with the city, it is just gone to uh to shit so um yeah not a lot of good food um everything just seemed like it was uh dated very dated so mtv it's mtv's fault that i didn't know that they had ties with the city so that's that's interesting i also kind of i feel like the energy too was down like leia said because 
before Mesa, that was like the first event of the year before Daytona, Daytona MLP. There was an APP event there and a PP a event there so like there are people have seen a lot of pickleball in daytona in the last well, like, I also, six weeks yeah, I mean, I feel, I, for, I think... from the player's standpoint we have been on the road for three weeks in a row i mean i know i was physically and mentally pretty dead going into that event yeah maybe... i saw i saw some players lacking some energy out there i won't name names none of them are on this call uh but some players who are normally pretty fiery seem pretty pretty tired um, and I talked to some players and I think there's just too many events, quite honestly. So hopefully that, that kind of, you know, sorts itself out. I'm pretty sure Mesa, Mesa's MLP came before the two PPAs in Arizona. So it was the first of the three, um, if I'm not mistaken. So that probably played maybe a little portion of it. Um, let's dive into the second topic, yep. rally scoring versus regular pickleball scoring, side out scoring, um, Let's start with Leia. Leia, how do you how do you feel about uh, rally scoring? I would like it if the games were longer. Right now, I kind of feel like it's just a free for all out there, and I definitely feel like the favored teams are like they. Uh, I noticed in my matches, like even when I was ahead, I never really felt like I was like ahead, and um, I think making them a little bit longer would be better. Um, and I think just the freeze, I get it, but also it, it, it just kind of makes it tough. To me, I feel like MLP, which I get from a viewer perspective, is just make everything really close. Um, so if I'm just going by win percentage, I would say traditional scoring. Selfishly. That's good. That's good. Uh, Sam, Sam, not that you have as much experience in either one of them, or tennis scoring, we can throw that one in there for you as well. Which one do you prefer? Uh, rally scoring, hands down. I think every pickleball event should go to rally scoring. I think it's fun. It's easy to explain to people. I like the freeze on 20 because I, I like the fact that it like it creates close games. When you watch sports, you want sports to be close. That creates close close moments. And uh, But most importantly, it's explaining to people – New people to the game. How does the scoring work? I'm trying to like explain it. They're just like, I, I have no idea. Uh, rally scoring is easy. Every point counts. And so I wish PPAs, right. APPs, whatever other three uh, letter league there is out there just goes to rally scoring. Jason, probably. what about you? Yeah, I mean, rally scoring makes all the games artificially close. And that's, I think, why Sam likes it. It benefits the team that's behind. And... Uh, <laughs> Are you saying I'm behind I, I was, a lot? Maybe that was insinuated. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that it makes things artificially close. It's not great from a playing standpoint, if you're asking me, because I'm usually ahead. Uh, but for those that are usually behind, I think they like it. And uh, it, it's better viewing experience for sure. Yeah. And Julian, explain to us what the energy, how the energy changes between rally scoring and traditional scoring. I don't know if it does, but uh, the strategy definitely does. Um, I'd have to say I I personally prefer the side out scoring. I think it stays true to to how pickleball was designed. And look, yeah, we all want sports and competition to be close, but um, you know if. Uh, you know, if Tom Brady's up by 20 points in the fourth quarter, they don't like double the points that the other team gets to make it close. It's a blowout because one team was much better that day, or it's a close match because it's supposed to be that way. And that's how sports are supposed to be played. And that's why we tune in to watch because we don't know what's going to happen instead of kind of guaranteeing that the match is going to be close no matter what with this rally scoring and this freeze. Um, I wouldn't change how MLP is played because it's, you know, it, there's select events and that's kind of how they're designed and it, it brings a lot of energy and, and drama to the whole thing. But uh, I would definitely not like to see all of pickleball head in that direction. Um if you want to make the argument that it's easy. supposed to be quick, quick takes, quick takes. Well, I didn't even get a take in the first one. So if it's, if I say the argument is like, if you want it to be easy to follow, 
yeah, it's a little easier, but it's not like no- normal pickleball scoring is difficult. Like you can figure it out. Um, there's a lot of sports that have weird scoring. And if you're a fan, you're going to, you're going to tune in and, and learn. Yeah. You're going to learn that scoring tennis, football, uh, cricket, like whatever. So I, I think what you, I think what you said, yeah, Dave, you, already had your, you already had your take. I think, I think the thing with rally is like, it's good, you know, like it's good for, I guess, ease of, of learning, but, uh, I, I don't like. I think for gambling is one of the, the the reasons they're they're instituting rally scoring. Right? Is that correct? That's what they say. Yeah. For timing yeah, and whatnot. No but but for gambling, like, to, how are you gonna cre- how are you gonna create a spread when it's not actually based on on the talent? Like that feels weird to me. Uh, that- so I think that really needs to be looked at. And I don't I don't like playing rally either. So there's, sorry, there's, Jason. There's things like well, stack, thing- like. You don't ever stack either or serve to the other person. Like if Leia is a right side player and I'm playing mixed against her, she doesn't even have to see my serve all match because right. we're stuck on the same side. Like there's a we lot tried, of, there's a lot of dumb tried, things about it. We tried playing rally actually at Daytona where you where it's like traditional kind of format where wow. you switch server. Wow. And it, it was weird. Uh you basically every point counts and you play the same way. Oh, but you just keep, and, you keep serving. And, yeah, it was weird though. You can do that. I feel like all the all the top pickleball players, Julian, Leia, none of none of you guys want the change. And so, like when you when you talk to like most of the top pickleball players right now, they're like anti rally scoring. It's just like when I was playing tennis, like when we try to like implement like changes in the tour, all the top players were like, "No, no, no, leave it as is." I'm like crushing the sport right now. You know, I don't want to try it, but I. I personally am like all for rally scoring. I think the best players are going to win, whether it's rally scoring or the. I, 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 I think. I think. I think eventually. Play. Eventually, they will, but it, it's been proven in other sports, i.e., volleyball, when rally scoring has been put in for like the first year in two. No, like it created an even playing field, and then the cream rose to the top again. But if you're someone like me, who's 30 years old, and you want to implement it in, I'm like, well, shit, I don't know how this will affect my career so we selfishly of course do but pickleball is such a momentum sport that i don't think anyone has ever played that in even with side out scoring it's it's momentum so with rally scoring it's really a free-for-all i love it i love it some may call it uh fabricated drama is some of the words that was thrown out recently um whether or not people next topic next topic next topic we're jumping into and Leah, Leah, you will um, be the last to input on this one just because we want your opinion last. But was the fives versus BLQK women's game the best game ever? Julian, let's start with you. It was good. It was very good. Very entertaining. Some amazing points. Um, best ever, always hard to say. Um, right. So I don't know if I'll, I'll say that, but it was it was it was a very very good entertaining match, high quality points. Um, so yeah, that's that's what the MLP is all about, right there. Jason, since, since I, well, okay, sorry, Jason, sorry, yeah. sorry, Jared, you don't get to go. It's Jason's turn. Yeah, that was a great match. Whether it's the best ever, I don't know. I have only seen a small portion of all pickleball played in the world. So, uh, fantastic, high energy. I thought the, you know, basically the underdog coming through was kind of fun to see. Uh, no offense, Leah. Uh, but I thought that Maggie Brashi had played out of her mind and that was really unexpected. Uh, so that was, that was fun. And, and I felt like she took every shot that was, was given to her by, by the, by the fives. So it was fun. Sam, what did you think if you, if you tuned in? I couldn't tell you who won that match or what round it was. I care about the Challenger League only. Once I didn't get out of pool play, I was on a plane home. But I was following the Challenger results on Friday. I can tell you who won all those matches. Uh, but who? What, what match are you talking about? It's Leigh and Anna Lee, There's obviously. Maggie and, and Andrew Coop. Oh. All right. Well, he doesn't know. And Moving Maggie forward. and Andrew Coop pulled the upset? Yeah. So, so, so I, I actually coined it, I think, on our page. And, and I think other people might said it, but I, I'd like to say I was first as saying it was the best pickleball game that I've ever seen. Um, I also said that about a game at uh, Mesa that Leia was also involved in. I don't remember if it was mixed or, or, or women's. It was mixed. Uh, it was but mixed. there was another game that was inc- 
It was mixed. It was, I think it was versus Rafa. Is that right? No, it was versus Tyson and Anna. And that had like a better storyline okay. to me. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think like Jason said, uh, Coop, who I think is a known entity and Brasha literally handled almost every single ball. And you guys were just, I mean, you guys played phenomenally. I thought, I thought Leia and Anna Lee, they beat in, you know, pretty much any other team in that game. And, and, and I think if they did it again, they'd probably win that game seven, eight, nine times out of 10, but Maggie and Coop were just unbelievable. And, I think there were moments, uh, there was at least a 10 point kind of, uh, um, you know, 10, 10 points in a row where everyone in our section were like, just like on, on edge. It was crazy. It was, it was, it was amazing. So Leia, give us your, I'm saying it's top, I'm saying it's top, top three. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely Leia, one all of, about you. You got, you got to tell us. Uh, I mean, it's definitely one of the best matches I've played in to be honest at the time. It was just so intense. I didn't even realize what was going on. But looking back on it, there were some great points. I was super happy for Maggie. She sat out the first one. Um, if I were to lose any match to anyone, I, I don't mind losing to Coop and Maggie. Coop is a good friend of mine. And Maggie um, is such a sweetheart. And I was really happy to see her do well. Um, however, it was just like a big heartbreaker for us. And I really think that match set the tone for us losing that semifinal. So, it's kind of like like my Minnesota final against Catherine still eats at me. That's one of those things that's like still haven't hit a ball since then because it's been pretty tough to take in. Fair enough. Fair enough. Good take. So um, then the next question that uh, I'm very curious to hear you guys' answer on, are we going to see a little bit more of strategy drafting singles players in MLP since this can make a little bit more of a difference when you're entering into Dream Breaker? Jason, let's start with you. We'll go to Sam after you. Yeah, I can't imagine we're going to see singles specialists being drafted. I think you, it, the name of the game is still doubles. Uh, you have to be good at both gender and mixed. And then if you have singles uh, resume to your name, that's a bonus. But I think uh, I, I don't think you can go after any single specialists. I think doubles is too important. Sam? Kind of agree you can't go after the specialist but if there's a toss-up you got to go with the singles person um you know maybe if someone's even a little better doubles than than the other person but that other person is a better singles game i would draft them our team personally has lost or oh and three in dream breakers uh you know your your winning match is basically three oh two one or two two i mean 33 percent of the time you're going to a dream breaker so like you got to have some singles players uh our team personally has struggled with them um, so yeah, I would, if I was drafting, like I would, singles would Absolutely. be kind Julian, of an important what thing. What is your take on that? Yeah, I think doubles is still a little bit more important, but uh, at the same time, there is a correlation between a, a strong singles player and a mixed player. So I think you're starting to see a lot of the top singles players being some of the best mixed doubles players as well you're talking about uh, men men in general yes um but uh you know i think i think the the bigger thing to look at when when drafting is maybe taking a little bit more of a risk and going with the player that has the higher potential or the higher upside so i'd like to I'd like to highlight how, how well Hayden played over the last weekend. Um, some would consider him maybe a liability on that team after the first event or someone who could have possibly have been traded or whatever. And uh, statistically, he was the second best player in MLP this year or this, this time around because the kid's a stud and he has such a high ceiling. Um, versus maybe drafting someone who's a little safer, but you're never going to win. So that's where in my team's case, I know we were debating between a couple people and ended up taking, you know, maybe a slight risk on Hunter based on how, you know, he played in the challenger league, but, you know, Thomas and I know him very well and know 
how high of a ceiling he has, and it really yep. ended up working in our favor. And I on top of that, he's a he's an amazing singles player. You know, I, I don't think there's many people we could have picked that would have made our team's singles even better. Yep. And Hunter was definitely one of those guys. Jared, what's your take on that? I mean, I think singles is very important. I think someone like Ryan Sherry, who doesn't really get a lot of credit, I think, because of, of his shenanigans. You'll never he's, get the singles. I, I just I disagree in the Challenger League. In the Challenger uh, League, I think yeah. Ryan Sherry can win a mixed game. I think with a strong enough male player, he can he, you know, the 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 other his male counterpart, his male teammate will be playing mixed kind of. Um, no, but then when he, for sure. Yeah. And if he gets the singles, like, I think it's ridiculous that he, that he hasn't been chosen. Um, I think that he, and I think he's an energy guy and I think he'd be a great teammate. So I think singles is very important. I mean, if you get to dream breaker, it's like, there's some teams, I was super surprised that the hard eights beat, um, the fives, right. I thought that was, that was, that was a huge upset, but there's he some dream breakers when you're watching. Time. It's just like, well, that's, that's, yeah. uh, that's strategical, like. You know, yeah, it's it's tough. Just, I mean, like they're just they're just shooting themselves in the foot. Over there. Leia was yeah, gonna Leia, Leia was gonna Leia. 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 But we Leia. can we cannot continue to have Anna Lee play the male. Uh, you know, it's it's just too tough. You know, they have the top, especially if yeah, absolutely. Huh? They have the top one and two. You have the top one and two female singles players. You know, it's like yeah. the only other person that could maybe beat Anna Lee in points is Catherine. She's yeah. Anna Lee will four zero three one everyone else, and instead. Well, oh, you oh, never, you really never know at MLP, guys. you know, on, on paper. But I, I was gonna say, I think uh, drafting the best athlete, which a lot of times is the best singles players. Like, uh, you know, like maybe six months ago, I remember last year, where um, Rob Cassidy was drafted over Julian and. That was a huge mistake, I thought, to Andrea Coop's team at the time, who never really got a guy after that. So Julian maybe wasn't there with his doubles yet, but he was a great singles player and a great athlete, energy guy who could have fit into that format. Great so point, I think Leia. when you're, so I think when you're looking at it, you got to look at like all around athletes because this is kind of like a triathlon of or like a whatever that's called that Bruce Jenner won of pickleball. Very much so. So. That's exactly why I was drafted number one. <laughs> but I'll, I'll also say that I think that singles is a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a crapshoot. Uh, I, I saw a lot of singles players that you expect to 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 beat uh, someone else, and I feel like the underdog just goes out swinging away. They have nothing to lose, and they tend to hit the the winning shot. Yeah, there's no. Well, why do, you, do, do, we, do we think it, that nerves plays a certain kind of like role in that? Because. I think there's certain players that are just like super confident in their singles abilities and will go out and just dominate. Like, I guess that doesn't always prove to be true. And I think it comes down to one shot. I think that if you're the underdog, you take that chance and it's hit or miss. If you hit the winning shot, you've now beaten that person and taken stolen a point essentially. Absolutely. When you, I don't know. I don't know about about the third shot, but I've, I win a lot of my singles matches where I'm down like three zero or seven three or five. Like singles is volatile, and I I I end up winning a lot of matches eleven nine, eleven seven, eleven five in the third. Like oftentimes I go three. So if we're just playing four points, like how am I going to guarantee you a four zero? That's yeah, a great it's, point. It's, That's it's a, a great point. It's a tough. It's a tough, tough uh, format. Four points at a time. Look, if yeah, it doesn't matter who you're playing. If you hit. If you hit your shot, most likely it's not coming back. Anyone can be uh, the Deckel Bar to the Absolutely. Lee Whitwell. So um, doesn't matter if you're Ben Johns or uh, you know, I don't know, Jared, the, Julian. This Jared is a good Paul point. So, so Julian, lead us into the next one. Tell tell us who underperformed um, in MLP um, team wise. Uh. Just like in, you mean underperformed based on like what we just thought. like what you think that they could have done their potential that they have on the team and then what they what ended up actually happening. There's only one definition for underperformed. Well, you know, you could say Team Clean is underperforming, but they've gone zero and three both times. Um, Very much so. But uh, really, I'd I'd say 
you know, there were some expectations on hard eights with Riley rejoining the team or joining the team for the first time. Um, they had a strong start beating the fives in their first round and uh, weren't really able to get the, the ball rolling. So, you know, I lost some tight ones yep. and that's, that's, tough. that's, that's, they were in a tough group. You know, that was, a, that was for sure any, anybody's group really. Um, Did Sam have any uh, underperformers in the challenger league? Yeah, my own freaking team. I mean, I'm on the DC team, like back to back events. We haven't gone out of, out of pool play. And um, I think as a team, we oh. played like a little worse this time than uh, collectively than we did in Mason. Florida, did you have another? So, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was going to be yeah. my Also, I mean, also, every, I mean every, group, every group's tough. Every group's tough. I, I don't think our group got the respect it deserved. It was a tough group. Um, and, uh, and yeah, they, they didn't win a match. So I think Jared. there's some there's some chemistry issues over there and uh, they're, they're trading because of that. So they have to. Yeah. Jared, what's your opinion on this? I think, uh, I think as, um, as Julian kind of was speaking to earlier, I think Hayden stepped up and played. Uh, played. He's such a stud. I was a GM. I drafted him one overall just for, he, I mean, yeah, it's Hayden, Hayden, I thought was, was phenomenal. Um, I would say, uh, you know, Tyson seemed pretty low energy and then he, he pulled out. So that was kind of a bummer. I'd say um, Maggie obviously was a total star out there. Um, on the challenger side, my guy, uh, Sam's guy, Wes Burroughs, uh, we talked about it. I think he, he, he wouldn't mind. He, he did not play his best pickleball. Um, that was definitely tough to see. I, I got in on Friday. I was hoping that he'd still be in and Sam. And they were both out, so that that was a bummer. Um, and who else? Uh, I mean, Rob Cassidy, number one. That's that's crazy. Brendan Long, I think, was a real you know breakthrough star this weekend. Um, and then the last point, I thought Hunter being the the fourth worst in challenger, but also but then going and playing great in the Premier uh, League, I thought was interesting. Yeah, that and was that's, crazy. And Julian, you said that you guys took a little. Julian, you guys took a little bit of a flyer on him. Um, doing that. I think, I think people like from the, you know, the outside lens would say yes, a little bit of, uh, maybe a chance, but I think, you know, like I said, Thomas and I know him pretty well and know what he's, what he's capable of. Um, but that's also where I think those player stats are kind of shenanigans, to be honest. Like, yeah. uh, you got to take them with a little bit of a grain of salt. So yeah, maybe he wasn't, uh, playing his best, but you know, who knows, maybe he got a bunch of let cords or, uh, yeah, anything, you know, anything who, can happen. Who knows what happened, right? You know, Leia, or, so, Leia yeah. what? Do you, what was your? Um, well, who was your underperformers or overperformers? Um, I would definitely say I underperformed. I felt like uh, compared to the first event, I I didn't play my best. Um, kind of felt like there were a few people on our team who did, and then you have to give it to Hayden. I felt like he underperformed at the first event, but I I don't want to say overperformed because. I've seen him play great, but that was the best I've seen him play. I don't think he had a, like, I was shocked when he missed a ball at certain times, you know? Um, uh, yeah. Who else did I really feel like over? I thought, I definitely thought Maggie Brasha played extremely well. And Andrea Coop, I felt like was extremely solid the whole entire tournament. Then I, that was the best pickleball ball that she has played all year. We we love to hear that. And Jason, did you notice anything from where, from where you were sitting? What was it, eight rows deep? Yeah, I thought that uh, I, th I thought the brushes were the story. I thought Maggie played out of her mind. Mary underperformed, uh, which I think going into it, you would have thought the opposite would have taken place. Uh, I thought Rob Cassidy had a great week. I thought uh, Eva Radikaska once again played out of her yeah. mind. Uh, that's what I saw. Awesome. Jason, remember having that call with me and Lauren about Ava? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need more you. details on that later. <laughs> so let's jump into who's going to be the one or two people that move up into Premier from Challenger when it happens. And who's and who's and who's going down to to? Oh to yeah, challenge. who might get dropped? Who might get dropped? Let's start with uh, Sam. 
All right. Um, I would need like a list of people in front of me because I don't yeah, actually know Yeah, he doesn't know even everyone, know the Premier League at all. I would go with um, – <laughs> I know on my own team, Stefan, like when he's locked in, he's very good. In Mesa, he was uh, taken up to one of the teams. So, like, I think he has a chance to to move up. I also think, um, I don't know, Tyler Long. Loom? 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 Long? Loom? Loom. He, he was good. I, he gave me a beat down over the weekend. He's, I thought he was really good. He's in that Sorry, yeah. I mean, Bre- you mean Brendan. Brendan, Brendan Long. Brendan Long. Oh, he's talking Brendan, Brendan, Brendan Long. Long. Brendan, Brendan Long. Long. Brendan Long. Yeah. Brendan Long. And then uh, moving down, whoever's on that team, please, because <laughs> they suck. I moved the Send whole him. team down. Uh, Jason, J- take the them. whole team and just put it, just replace teams. Uh, Jason, what do you think? I think Matt, yeah, I think Matt will up. skip if he's in the yeah, challenger. I, I think so. Uh <laughs> I think uh, Eva Radikowska goes up. Pablo Tez goes up. Um, I think uh, I think Brendan Long, who uh, about your boy Alshon? Alshon, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the consistency is there, but uh, but I, I think uh, Brendan Long, who wasn't even in uh, Mesa, or he showed up as an alternate, didn't get picked up. Uh, he got drafted into the challenger this time and then bounced all the way up to premier. So he's, he's on a meteoric rise in Austin last week. He made it to the semifinals with Johnson Cola of the men's doubles. So he's, he's on fire. Watch out for him. Absolutely. Leia, what about you? Um, I think Eva is definitely one. Um, I know someone on my radar is Bobby Oshiro. I know her team hasn't been doing as well, but I think Bobby is definitely a premier level girl. Um, for the guys, I mean, the guys, it's tough. There's, there's a few guys that I'm like, wow. And to be honest at this, there's not one overwhelming guy that I think in premier right now is like, you've got to go down. So it's going to be interesting to see. I think the guys is going to be a lot more competitive, but you got to go like uh, Tez, um, all Sean, uh, definitely Stefan. Gosh, there's so many other ones. You know, honestly, I thought Brandon French was pretty valuable at proving he can play on the right in mix and in men's, um, and he's the worst person to play. No. So, French, French. Huh? Well, one thing I saw on Twitter, and Leia, it might have been from you. I forget who exactly I was reading things from. They were mentioning that when you're bringing up somebody, usually they're going to actually bring up a right-sided player. The left-sided player is probably the, the person that's going to stay. And so you might be seeing more of that right side of specialist moving up into that spot rather than a left side, or maybe even a singles player, right? Um, somebody that I, can yeah. Well, well. I, I was going to say I, I can't believe no one has said Hunter's name. Um, absolutely, would be my first male to come up. And the problem is that there's just not there's just not a lot of space, right? It's, um, I'm, I'm looking at the list and it, it's it's tight. Like I'm looking at the list and I I'd rather not name names. Um, I have people, two names. I have two names that down. I think will go down. Damn. Two names that could go down. I, I can't. I don't. Think, I don't think I should say them. I don't even. Why? I don't think there are like. I don't think there's any girls that I would bring up. To be honest, you got to think too. Jared, who would you yeah. move down? I would, I, would, Come on. I, would, I would not move in, them in down. The middle, in the middle of my turn, too. <laughs> go ahead. Jared, if you Jared, you're if you're gonna you interrupt, you gotta just t- you gotta say better it. say I'm Julian Arnold. Said like I, 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 I would not move them down. I, I love Muted. them. One I'm gonna say is because the guy got traded. Uh so Kyle Yates, I thought that was interesting. He got traded. I didn't see enough of his his matches um this week or this past weekend. Um, but I do wonder about the trade and, you know, Kyle's an old school guy. He's, you know, he's, uh, I mean, he's had good, he had some good results this year, I think. So I, I do worry about Kyle. I hope to see him up there. I think he's a, a spark plug. I, I'm a big fan of Kyle. Eric Lang, um, you know, the shock were pretty good, but, but Lang is someone who I also didn't see a lot of. I'm just, I mean, I'm just looking at the list. Like there's not a lot of space, right? And yeah. Tardio, I think was Tardio was someone that people were talking about. Hayden was someone that people were talking about. And I think they both played great. So I don't see them going down. Um, so I don't know. I don't I don't know where the space is. I, I think Yana uh is potentially um on the chopping block, just given her performance 
in, you know, being part of clean cause. Um, Mary, you know, I think Mary's great. I don't think she performed exceptionally well. Um, so I think yeah, that might be an energy. There's a surprise for Mary. Yeah, exactly. 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 There's a few I teams that the me. players are underperforming because the synergy is not great. And you're also looking at these, these, these challenger level players like Ava, who is playing amazing, but you're comparing apples to oranges when they're playing it. Like, why don't you put me and Leia in the, in the challenger yeah. league? And then, like, see point. what the hell happens. That, that's so, a well, well, fair, to your, well, to, well, to your point, they did retreat. put Hunter there, and Hunter did not perform well. And then when we went up to Premier, he did. So that there, doesn't make sense. There is some, yeah. I mean, but it, Julian, yeah, and Leia, I Julian and Leia, Julian and Leia. I don't. See, I think Hunter um, is still Hunter is still learning a little bit. So, Leah, what did you, Leah, what was, did you say? My thing with Hunter is. Um, in my form of drafting, and this is kind of where I feel like Eric is getting hurt, and uh, is if I don't see you at PPAs or consistently playing, I, you're probably not going to be on my radar because we just don't know. I, I thought Simone played great, but I was, you know, that's Simone. She's been battle tested forever. If you're not constantly getting battle tested and the PPA players aren't seeing you, it's going to be tough. Like, I hadn't seen Hunter play in the longest time. That's fair. That's, that's fair. Point. And then, all right, so we're, we're kind of heading that direction anyway. Let's talk about who won the trade between the Florida Smash and the Vegas Night Owls. Jared, take us away, followed by Leia. Um, I, you know, I think I'm really looking at fit versus talent. You know, I, I, I think that both teams were really struggling to get the results they wanted. I mean, Smash did have a good showing in, in Mesa. Um, but my gut would say that the uh, – that the uh, Night Owls um, won the trade. Um, that's just what my gut says initially. Leah, what do you feel? How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think where the Night Owls struggled was um, their women's team are both great, separate players, but just for fit, I think um, I think Lauren Stratman is one of the most dangerous players on the right side with her forehand, and where I just feel like she's more comfortable and she counters extremely well from the right. Um, so I think her and Jesse will be a much stronger gender team if, um, their chemistry holds up and, uh, Jekyll and Colin on paper should be a great team. I think Kyle, like I said, it hasn't been seen the reps when we played him, he didn't play too great. Uh, and it, although Viv and Georgia should be an upgrade from Jesse and Georgia as well, just from a fit style standpoint as well. So I, I just kind of have to think the night owls are going to become a lot tougher from this trade. If the chemistry holds up. Love that. Sam, Sam, how do you feel about it? Sam, do you know it? Do you know uh, what the trade happened? Was, you know, I know it. I know it was Jesse and Colin got switched for Kyle and who's a girl? David. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Night Owls win that trade. Jesse's so good. I think Jesse's like unbelievable. I would never trade Jesse. Colin, I probably want him off my team. So it's like Florida's getting a little win there. But I do think 60 40 Night Owls uh, are getting the better end of that. Julian. Yeah, 100% Night Owls. Uh, I think Leia hit the nail on the head with, you know, Lauren being a little bit more comfortable on the right and utilizing, you know, more of her traditional weapons. Jesse can play both sides. I think their chemistry will be just fine. And then, you know, Colin is probably the biggest issue when it comes to chemistry, but him and Deckel are good buddies. That team's going to be rock solid. Deckel can and fill. Jesse, uh, Jesse the, and Colin will play mixed together, right? Because they like playing mixed and together. Je and Jesse – and Jesse and Colin will play mixed together, and that'll be just fine. So I, I don't think the chemistry will be as big of an issue. Uh, Viv and Georgia. Viv and Georgia are interesting, I think. I think Viv and Georgia are great together. It's going to help Georgia so much to have a supportive character like Viv next to her. It's going to allow her to play a little bit freer. So I think that women's team will get better. But I think Travis and Kyle might end up being one of the weakest male teams in – all of MLP. Um, Travis is a, they're, they're both great players, but 
Travis can be a little hot and cold. Um, and I don't think he's going to fix the chemistry issues that he's looking to fix. Um, Cause I think Kyle and him will also butt heads I can see with that. a sty- stylistic, you know, Travis has a very, very specific thought when it comes to like how pickleball should be played. And yep. it takes a very specific kind of player to go with that. And I don't know if Kyle's traditional style will fit that mold. So Jason, um, do, you, do you feel that way too, Jason? I think that, I, I think that if Travis made that trade, he must know something or have spoken to Kyle and they're on the same page. I think that the chemistry for Vivian and Georgia to be together is going to be spectacular. I think Vivian brings this such positive energy to the, to the table that I think that will help Georgia a ton. I worry about Jesse and Lauren together because uh, when things aren't going well, they can both get quiet. And that, that, maybe both that will help them talented, though. but they got to they, like, and playing, I, I played it with might, Lauren. I played with Lauren quite a bit, and I we had our most success when um, Lauren actually doesn't want someone to bring her up. It actually kind of pisses her off. So when I would leave Lauren alone, she would play. She would bring herself out of it. Where, Julian. where she doesn't bring herself out of it when it's like, come on, like she doesn't want that. So I think Jesse might actually be a good partner for her because Jesse just wants to be by herself as well so they can kind of both do their <laughs> yeah. thing yeah yeah she yeah, I mean, she doesn't want a hand she doesn't want someone to hold her hand i agree with that no. so absolutely um, so hey, guys before um, um, i, I want to get i want to get sam's i want to get sam's opinion on one thing another thing um just real quick i want to hear what you guys think and we'll start with sam on the jack sock announcement of playing a PPA. I think he's partnering up with Tyson and Anna Lee Waters. Mm-hmm. Sam, you first. Yeah. Look, him and Anna Lee can like win the mix. Jack is really, really good. And him and Tyson are can win matches in the men's. Uh Jack practices like five days a week. He practices pickleball right now as much as he practices tennis. He's good. He wants to be good. And uh whenever that time comes that tennis is done, like he's going to jump into pickleball and, and make a splash, but I, I'm stoked to watch him play. It's awesome that he got great partners right out of the shoot. And everyone is going to be curious to see how that uh, plays out. Jason, do you think uh, Jack Sock is going to make a splash his first week? Yeah, I think it'll, it'll be exciting to watch. I think we're all looking for the tennis players coming over and seeing if they have the success that we all know that is possible. And so we'll see. I don't know if it's that easy, but we'll be watching. Leia, he's been playing for a long time. Like he plays, he plays, but he plays. Like I said, like literally five days a week for the last like PPA year. So he's top very good. Talent every week, playing right? gala. No, he's, he's playing good people, and he thinks he thinks he's as good as everyone, which like goes Absolutely. a long way in sports. He has the belief. That's a good already. point, Sam. Leia, how do you feel? I, I I don't think him and Tyson will do well in men's doubles. I really don't. I don't think Jack has the offense to like go bed. Um, but I do think him and Anna Lee will be a really good drive and poach team. <laughs> like that's going to be really tough. He can cause some chaos and mix and he's obviously playing with the top mix girl. So it'd be interesting to see. Um, I don't really like making any predictions after you, Sam. And Julian, give us, give us your take on, on what you think the Jack, how much uh, of a splash Jack Sock will make. Is he, is he going to play singles? Ooh, Ooh, that's a that's good question. I'm actually not sure. I, I don't know. I, I, I think Jack is extremely talented. I think he, he will really come through the sport quickly once he dedicates the time. I think right now he's going to be very competitive, but I think he's going to run into the same kind of issues that most of us tennis players come into when we, we first enter the sport. We're just not making quite enough balls or making that that correct decision when you know you, you're you're trying to do it in a split second. Um, obviously, he has two very very good partners. Um, Annalie being the best mixed partner that you could ask for, um, but with that comes some expectations. So I think the pressure will be on. I don't think he'll necessarily feel it, but I just I just think I just I'm not going to say that they're going to win the tournament, but I do think they'll do very well. And I agree with 
Leia. I don't, I'm not sure how him and Tyson will do. I think I think styles are a little different. I'm sh- I feel like Jack really wants to play aggressive, get in hands battles, utilize that athleticism. Tyson's more of a traditional style player, so uh, who's going to play sure left? How that'll play right? work? I'd hope Jack Tyson, play Tyson left. will play right. Yeah, Tyson um, will play the right. So okay. uh, yeah, Jared, but, uh, do you, do you have I, any I hot Jack takes on really good? Jared, do you have I, any I, hot I, takes I, here? I'm excited for Jack. I think he's going to be, I just, some of the stuff I've seen, uh, I think he's going to be really good um, in, in, in mix. I think they'll, I think they're going to win it. Um, and then I think just, I think it's great to have more tennis players coming in. Uh, Sam hasn't, you know, he's not number one yet. Um, but I think his storyline and just being a part of the sport and coming over, I think, I think it's a play with Anna Lee first. That's first true. Out of the shoot. I, Sam, I think, I think you're on the that's right because, track. I think Jack's going to be so a great well, addition. Bubbly. Right, that's where they linked has it up been with six, that bubbly. Has it been six months yet, Sam? <laughs> okay. Uh, no, no, not yet. My friend has been three months. So when I, I, when did I, we start I, Sam's clock? When does Sam's clock start? Is it now? Is today the, the be- uh, no, no. day it's zero? Like three months ago. Three months ago. As soon as he made the announcement. Yeah. Uh oh. Three months ago. Sam, how I often? Think, are you, Sam, how often are you playing right now? Time. Every few weeks, I play once. <laughs> once. I saw you do some rock climbing in your backyard. That looked in te- some intense training. No, I, I play like I play like three, four times a week. It's, like, hard, not, it's hard not to play. It's fun, you know. And you get to go yeah, hang I out like with West. Like I want to play. I like, yeah, I, I like. I enjoy going out to practice. Leia, how often are you training right now? Um, guys, I have to. I have to leave. Kick him. Kick him Hit out. Him straight. Hit him straight. Man, you're out. Thanks for being here. <laughs> See you soon. Leia, how often are you training right now? Um, well, I'm taking this these this next four days off, but usually like five, six times a week I try and train. It's been a little bit less since we've been on the road, but uh, yeah, usually like five, six times a week. And then, um, Julian, are you – do you – and? I guess both of you guys can answer this, but Julian, I'll start with you. Are you guys, when you guys are training, and Julian, you can tell us how often you're training as well. Are you guys separating um, men's doubles or women's doubles, gender doubles, uh, mixed doubles, and then singles? Are you training all three? Um, Well, I generally practice probably every day except for a day or maybe two after an event depends on like if we have multiple events in a row if we have multiple events in a row then maybe i just take the monday off or the sunday if i'm not playing um and then yeah i mean i i actually i actually don't practice singles um you're not the first person that i've hold, i've heard say, say that so that makes uh, a lot of sense. i i i like rarely Rarely, rarely. I, I think the last time was with, was actually with Leia. Um, Are you kidding me? So I played. That was before the Masters. No. <laughs> yeah. That's wow. crazy. Well, you guys so, get you guys get long days in. So I think I think singles comes more naturally to me, and and I can you know I drive the ball enough in doubles, and uh, and I'd rather go out there and and work on the double skills, which translate to yep you know i just for me i'm a feel player i just need to go out there and feel the ball and and make sure that my touch is calibrated um how, I don't need how often do you guys think jared body. and jason are playing jared and jason well jared calls me schedule? jared calls me on a nightly basis hoping that i'll come to bolden acres yeah and, uh, <laughs> and i'm and i'm and i'm and i'm probably there at least once a week just to heckle him and, uh, I was gonna, invite, I was gonna invite Leia to come play once, and then I was talking to Leia somewhere, and she was talking about like an amateur player that I knew, and she was like, "I thought that was guy was be good, but he sucks." So I've never invited Leia because I know she'll when I leave, she'll be like, "That guy sucks." Oh, I <laughs> for, you, for you. All right, this I, was for you. I would. Yeah, you say I suck, Jared. Anything for yeah. you? We'll we'll all tell you you suck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Jared, let's wrap it up. This was episode one of The Pressure Cooker. Uh, Julian, thank you for joining. Leia, thank you for joining. Jason and Jared, 
It's a pleasure as always. And um, Sam, even though we kicked him out of the chat, it was a pleasure having you. Bye, and we'll Sam. see you guys later. <laughs> later, guys.